Just a quick recap from last week. After finishing the Nelson Regatta, we headed up through the Tasman Bay all the way up to French Pass. Went through the French Pass only to realize it's blowing 30 knots in the Cook Strait. Nothing unusual. We decided this is probably not the best weather for us to cross in our little boat. So we decided to head down southwest to Picton to wait out the bad weather. Coming from the north, so we decided to go and find a sheltered bay. We pulled up onto the beach and did our favourite party trick. This storm lasted for two days and it can get pretty boring sitting on a boat for two days. But you get very creative in ways to entertain yourself. After the storm had settled, we decided to head back to Picton, explore the local area and get our sails fixed. One of the islets on our storm jib had corroded and fallen out, so we wanted to make sure we got that fixed before we headed back over the Cook Strait to Wellington. We met some backpackers and decided to go out for a sail, but eventually... Everything broke. <laughs> Can you show me? <laughs> back to the sail shop. Back to the sail shop. It's definitely better that things like this happen here instead of somewhere out in the Cook Strait. So we decided to put our engine in, drop off our backpacker and go fishing for the evening. I got a fish! <laughs> Hello! That's what I got today. Let him back in! Bye fishy! This morning we've got Roberts in the kitchen making some breakfast in our little open plan house. Roberts is making some coffee. Normally we have it outside but this morning it's a bit cold. It's amazing, whilst you're having breakfast, you also have <laughs> to wake up to. As days passed and we were waiting for the weather window to go back to Wellington, we kind of made Picton our home. It was a very interesting experience because it's one of those towns where people pass through and they don't really stay at, so all the friends we made didn't last for very long because they were off to somewhere else. It does have some pretty amazing views and the Queen Charlotte track, but if we did have a choice it's not somewhere we would spend two weeks. After seeing a potential weather window where we could use to get back to Wellington, we went back to the sail shop to get some new slugs and replace the old ones which had gotten hard and brittle over the years. I've really got to remember to buy some gloves. After we had stocked up on necessities that we would need for our journey, we were more than ready to leave Picton. We stayed overnight in a sheltered bay by the Tory Channel, ready for our early start the next day across the Cook Strait. A couple of our friends that we made in Picton joined us on this trip back to Wellington as an alternative to taking the ferry. It was late afternoon when we arrived at a beautiful bay by the Turo Channel. We tied up to shore and set our beds up for the night. We also witnessed something pretty amazing which none of us had ever seen before. As we were throwing our ropes onto shore they hit the water and created fluorescent blue splashes. If you've got any idea of what this could be, drop a comment below. We left Tuawa Bay at around 6am and aimed to be at the Tory Channel for 8.30am. We needed to be at the Kaori Rip by 5pm to avoid rough waters. So we aimed to get to the Tory Channel by slack water. The tide was going out at 6 knots and our boat was averaging at 4 knots. We're doing 8 knots now. How do you feel? Good! Yeah, we're 
about to exit. Yeah, you better get all the stuff in the shelves. Channel complete with six knots tied out and um, no winds and water's ripped. That was fun. Very fun. As there was absolutely no wind, we had to motor all the way from the Tory Channel to Wellington. Beautiful day on the Cook Street and Cowrie Rip. Yeah, that's so lovely than the Cowrie Rip. Seeing some dolphins. Me and a dolphin. <laughs> That is New Zealand for you in a nutshell. Loads of dolphins that want to come out and play with you. Blue waters, amazing views. But yeah, we're about to arrive in um, Wellington. We're almost finished our journey. We're going to be there in like two hours or so. And um, yeah, going to enjoy the nice weather until it ends on the day after. More rain. Oh well. After a month of being away from Wellington, we were happy to return. We were going to drop anchor here for a few months and find work and save up for our next big journey. We were very lucky to get a mooring in such a beautiful place in the heart of Wellington. This meant we could go back to our boat whenever we wanted to. So what happens when you come to a mooring that hasn't been used for a while? Is you get really dirty. All this looks like a murder scene, I cleaned it off. These ropes are disgusting. But they've been sitting here for quite a while, aren't they? We're scrubbing off the buoy. Looks like a murder scene. Yeah, it smells very fishy. What are you doing? I expected to be doing when I was trying to change, but I'm always moaning in videos. <laughs> this is really fun, I love it. This is amazing, isn't it? Great experience. It smells delicious. After looking back and reminiscing into the adventures we had, all we could think about is how do we get out again and where should we go? How do we achieve self-sustainability and keep traveling and not have to stop and go back to work? How do we work and travel at the same time?